Today we're going to take apart a sent in Limax shooting range that doesn't function right. The target's supposed to spin and this fellow is supposed to move back and forth. And watch when I give it power. No spin, no movement, but you can hear everything working inside. This person was kind enough to send me some color photos. With a diagram explaining what they found. And what needs to be repaired. Stay tuned. Alright, went ahead and cut the bottom out or pulled the bottom out. The person before me had already cut the foam rubber and removed it from the bottom of the house. As you can see, there's a little hot melt glue that holds the wiring in so it doesn't get in the way of the mechanism. It's right there. And you have to unplug it to remove the center section where you have the drive unit. And I'll try and let you see. You can see the transmission in there. There's the drive motor that drives the belt that runs the transmission that makes this spin and this guy dance back and forth behind the tombstone that's still inside the house. Let's see if we can find the problem. One of the gears isn't spinning the rest of them. So we need to disassemble the transmission. And this is where it gets tricky. You lose all the small parts. There is a handful of screws all the way around this. You only have to remove the six outer ones. These two attach to the motor. You can pull the motor out. Still attached to the assembly. If you unscrew these two screws right here, you're going to lose your motor. It's not that hard to put back in. It's just one extra step you don't need to do. And then we'll get this guy spinning again. So as you can see, that if I spin this, you can see that the everything moves. But if you look in here, you'll see the little drive gear is turning, but this gear is not. And that's the gear that takes the motor transmission to the mechanism transmission. It's the pass-through, and it is bound up or broken. So now comes disassembly. All right, screwdriver, and let's get to it. Anybody that collects these knows that at one point or another they're going to fail if they're animatronic. And we're going to try and save this one. Carefully pull it apart. You don't lose all the gears. And we're going to try and fish this wire through to get it out of our way. Which isn't going to happen, so we're going to carefully slide it all over to the side. Well, as you can see, it does work, so somewhere it's it's 
finding. the problem. Might be hard to see. This little gear right here is split. So what's happening when it hits that crack, it stops. It doesn't sound so good why it doesn't go in a complete circle. You can force past it. So we need to replace this gear. Alright, so let's take the rest of this apart. As you can see, the back of the transmission is held on with just a couple of more screws. If you're wondering about the gear that fell off, right there. Okay. Here's the issue. This gear. crack right here. Which is causing this gear to spin on the neural shaft. You can see the neuralings right there. So the tension from this mechanism with the broken gear is not gripping anymore. Also, this shaft is bent. Very slightly. Which might put undue stress on this little fella. So, we're going to go through our pile of parts and see if we can find a new gear. Possibly a new shaft. Reassemble this and see if it works like it's supposed to. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Took a little bit of time to find the gear, but the gear has been found. Slightly different than the original, but same size, same pattern. I have already pressed the gear on and reassembled the transmission off camera. That way I can make sure it lines up. Also during the process, the cheap leadless solder broke on one of the wires, so I have cleaned and stripped both of them. They'll get re-soldered and actually correctly sealed versus using hot melt glue to be the insulator. So, to show you that it works and that everything's good, we're going to put the transmission back onto its studs. We're going to screw it back in and then we're going to test it. You ever have an old cassette player or Walkman, CD, etc., that broke, tear it apart. The gear that I pulled this out of was actually the pressure gear from an old beta camcorder. It just happened to be the same teeth, same diameter and pretty much the same shaft. Don't over tighten the screws, you're all unscrewing in the plastic. Just go till they stop, don't torque them. You will break them. Uh, I've already done these here. 
when I put the first part of the transmission together. To show that it works, we're going to hook it up to 4.5 volts power. I do know it's 4.5 volts because I tested it to ensure that all the components on this house is 4.5 volts. And there you go. Fully functioning. Everything moves. Nice and smooth. No noise. You can see the gear spinning right along just like it's supposed to. Now, just need to solder the wires back to the plug. Make sure they're on the right polarity if you happen to break yours. If you happen to break your wires, if you do this at home, check the polarity. You need a voltmeter. This is what I use. You can see on the screen, just to show you that I am putting four and a half volts to this house. There you go. 4.58. The power supply that's on the unit is a 4.5 volt power supply that is putting out just a little over 4.5 volts. Now comes reassembly. This plug, which plugs it in the circuit board inside the house, has two wires. One wire has a long stripe with a small stripe, then a long stripe and a small. The other one has small plus signs. No, actually they're not plus signs, they're more like a line with a dot. Uh, the line with the dot is actually the negative. The long line followed by the short line, kind of like Morse code is your positive. On your DC motor, your red is your positive, your black is your negative. So we're going to solder it back together and then we're going to properly insulate it so that way it is safe and it won't short out causing damage to the unit itself. All right, because these wires are so small, I'm going to use a set of helping hands. Some of you might be familiar with these, some might not. Uh, I used to be able to get them at Radio Shack when they were around. Uh, you can probably order them online without any problems. I'm also going to use heat shrink to protect the wires so they don't arc against each other. It's important you put the heat shrink on first before you start soldering it makes it really difficult at that point. You'd have to desolder it and then redo it. So, we're also going to clean up the end of the wire where it broke from the cheap solder joint get a little bit better, longer section on both the hot and the negative. Make sure you do it to all four wires if necessary. How we're going to fix this is there's a couple different ways. The way I prefer when I'm soldering in a straight line and I need to have heat shrink is I actually push the wires together to where they kind of spread out like a, uh, a rope and then give them a little bit of a twist.
This way when the solder soaks in, you have a very narrow solder joint that uh, will be really strong. And I will tell you it is more difficult with thinner wire like this than with thicker wire. You can solder it any way you like. You can twist them together and solder it. Heck, you can even just put it together with little electronics butt connectors. I prefer the solder them to ensure that the joint is good. There you go. I also use lead based solder, which this unit doesn't. You can tell by the color. Solder iron is nice and hot. seconds there to cool and now you have a nice strong bond slide the heat shrink over it once it's cooled so it doesn't pre shrink the heat shrink <laughs> that would be bad like so you can use a heat gun lighter hair dryer to melt the heat shrink. I have a heat gun right here. You can hear it powering up. And there you go. It is now heat shrunk and soldered. So the hot wire is now done. Now we're going to do the negative, same way. We'll use that other piece of heat shrink, the one that I was cut in half. Slide it over your wire. Twist your wires together. Sorry that you can't see it all. I know that my hands are way bigger than the wires. for you. Make sure you don't burn yourself when you're doing this. Get the wire hot and then let the solder soak into the strands. Just supporting the wire. To let it cool for a second. go. Same thing. Slide your heat shrink back over. Take your heat gun. Just like it's supposed to be. Stronger than the way it came with better quality solder and I'm not using hot melt glue as an insulator I'm actually using electrically approved heat shrink so to prove that it will run under its own power let's bring the house back in now if you have big mitts like me it's a little hard to plug it back in I would recommend using a small pair of needle nose. These have a 45 degree offset. This connector, if you can see it, 
can only be plugged in one way. There's a boss on one side, so you can't reverse the polarity. And then deep inside, is a plug that you got to plug it into. And you'll hear it click into place. Slide the unit back in. So. All right, the unit is back off, and I am going to slide the base out just a little bit. Except I got to realign the guy in the end. That way I can pull it out. And we're going to reseal this with hot glue. So that way when you lift it up, the bottom doesn't fall out. Alright, we're back from the pause. Had to wait for the glue gun to get hot. So we're going to run a bead. I'm sorry you can't see it all, but there's a, a ledge that this fits in. And we're going to run a bead of hot melt glue around it. I cannot tip the house on its end because I can break the top. But basically we're just going to run a little bit of hot glue. On the top. And the bottom edge. And on the bottom edge is not complete. It's notched to pull the motor out. So I can only put it in the corners on the bottom. And we're going to carefully, once we get rid of the hot glue strings, slide the unit back in. Get it to fit flush. And we're going to hold it for a few seconds to let the glue do its job. That concludes the Spooky Town shooting range by Lee Max. Hope you enjoyed it. Put any questions in the comments. If you're going to try this at home, just be aware this is a porcelain house. Don't drop it. You will break it. The gear, like I said, came out of a camcorder. That's why we're called the Random Junk Channel. I have random parts to virtually everything. Most of it's interchangeable. If you want to try this at home, make sure that you don't break anything if you can avoid it. Just the part that's broken, fix it. Other than that, it's probably a moderate expertise. Biggest part is finding the gear, pressing it on, and then making sure that you reassemble it without binding anything. On the bottom of these Lee Max houses is a rubber foot. You can see the person that sent it to me cut out the base so I could pull, pull out the center. All I did was glue the plastic base back to the porcelain body. The sticky mat still had some stickiness to it, so I just pressed it back down. 
if you have to, you can pull the mat completely off. You can get thin foam mat from places like Hobby Lobby and Michaels, and you can cut it to shape and glue it on yourself. I usually glue it on with hot glue. Some people choose contact cement, epoxy. It's completely your choice. But this one is now done and ready to go. And as you can see from the top, the reason I couldn't hold it upside down to show you everything is so I don't break off the porcelain pieces that stick up. But that is the shooting range, fully assembled, ready to go back to its rightful owner. Thanks for watching.